Good morning, Malakanyang Press Corps, and welcome to our press briefing this morning. In the Cabinet Cluster meeting earlier, the Department of Transportation presented to President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. some findings and recommendations on the airport incident on January 1st. DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista led the presentation. Ibinahagi niya ang mga kailangan gawin para sa improvement ng mga sistema sa kaap at sa airports. Magpapa Magpaliwanag din si Secretary Ivan Uy ngayon ng uh, Department of Information and Communications Technology tungkol naman sa communications at connectivity aspect ng insidente. At para bigyan tayo ng mas comprehensive explanation kasama natin ngayon si na DOTR Secretary Jaime Bautista at DICT Secretary Ivan Uy. Let's start with Secretary Bautista. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Dapnig. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, press briefing. No? Uh, this morning, uh, we met with the president and gave him an update of uh, what happened uh, during uh, uh, the January 1 uh, issue that uh, we had with the CNS uh, ATM of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. No? Uh, we also uh, made some recommendations on uh, how we will move forward. No? And uh, the president is uh, very much aware of uh, what happened, no? and uh, he supports uh, our recommendation to uh, implement uh, uh, future requirements necessary for the upgrade uh, or improvement of uh, the CNS uh, ATM system, no? which includes uh, hardware and software maintenance, hardware replacement, uh, ultimate uh, fallback system for software redund redundancy and uh, the need for an independent CNS ATM in a separate location. No? Uh, he also uh, instructed us to uh, continue the uh, maintenance of uh, all existing uh, equipments no? uh, and at the same time uh, he wants us to uh, fast track the arrangement for a maintenance agreement with uh, Sumitomo Antales, who is the provider of uh, the system. No? So, uh, thank you. Uh, that, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm sure there will be some questions in a little while, but let's move on to Secretary Ivan Uy. Do you have anything to uh, report, sir? <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much, and um, good morning to everyone. Well, um, as uh, Secretary Jimmy Bautista has mentioned um, during the uh, sectoral uh, cluster meeting uh, this morning, we did discuss on um, the incident that happened last January 1. And so far from the cybersecurity aspect, um, there, there doesn't appear to be any um, cyber-related incident that uh, triggered um, the incident. It was basically an electromechanical um, malfunction that um, that triggered the whole the whole incident but nonetheless uh, we took the opportunity to conduct a thorough um, review and cybersecurity audit of the whole system since we're already there in order to ensure that um, uh, the system is adequately uh, protected from any cybersecurity um, threats no as you very well know, um, immediately after our incident, a few days later, the U.S. Uh, air transport management system failed, entire United States. And a few days later, the Canadian system also failed. We still have no clear uh, report from both the U.S. and Canada as to how uh, or why um, or in what way their, their system failed except for they're publicly announced that it is a system glitch or a software issue. So we're still awaiting word um, from them and exchanging uh, notes. Uh, however, we're not taking any chances and we are um, um, conducting a thorough assessment of our own internal system just to make sure that um, uh, we have the proper systems and security in place. Um, to prevent to pre prevent any any issues um, on on the on the software and on the um, cybersecurity aspect, 
So this this will require um, upgrades. This will require um, probably uh, replacement of some um, some equipment, hardware, and um, software. So those are currently ongoing, and um, we'll will will be able to perhaps um, give you a further update um, um, as soon as we have other news. Thank you. Okay, on the SIM cards. Any? Ah, yes. So on another topic, <laughs> we're shifting to a new topic. Okay. Um, reg with, reg with regards to the SIM card registration, um, uh, the recent report I received is we have more than 20 million already registered uh, SIM card users. So we are, we are roughly one month um, from the implementation, uh, from the release of the implementing rules and regulations and um, we've already achieved more than 20 million registrations. So we are progressing very, very fast. And thank, I'd like to thank the public, the general public, for being very uh, responsive to our appeal to register as soon as possible. And in order to help uh, our remote areas, because the bigger issues actually are those remote areas where they do not have any Wi-Fi um, connection, where they can do the registration. So we have launched a, a SIM card registration caravan that is going to all those remote areas. And we've started um, um, the first, the first uh, caravan is um, we did at, uh, in Ifugao, the mountain province, uh, last week. And in the next few days, uh, we have a three-day uh, um, SIM card registration in the remote areas. Uh, January 25, uh, we're addressing Region 1, 7, 8, 10, and 11, which will be in Ilocos Norte, Cebu, Leyte, Bukidnon, and Davao del Sur. Um, at the mostly at the municipal auditorium, no. Um, we'll, we are providing a press release as to where these uh, sites will be and exactly which. Um, auditorium, municipal hall, or gym of those um, municipalities or barangays that we'll be deploying. January 26, it will be in Cagayan Autonomous Region, um, Region 2, Region 3, Region 4A, and Region 9. And on day 3, January 27, it will be 4B, Region 5, Region 6, Region 7, and Region 13. Um, you'll be getting a list of all the specific areas where we will have internet connectivity either through our digital transformation centers our um, telecenters or our um, free wi-fi areas where there will be people who will assist um, in the sim card registration these are all remote areas in the country where they cannot connect so um, so far that's all um, on the sim card registration there have been some issues that um, has cropped up um, and um, we're currently also addressing um, some of those issues that were not anticipated um, before. Like um, there are SIM card wholesalers that have bought mm -hmm. thousands of SIM cards and now they're not able to sell it and it's going to expire because if they are not se able to sell it and it's not, it doesn't belong to any person yet, baka maputol dahil hindi na rehistro yung mga SIM cards. So, Anyway, we're working with the telcos on how we are going to um, ad address some of those um, issues. That's just an example of, of one of them. Anyway, so that's it. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you so much, Secretary Ivan Nguyen. Now, now let's open the floor for some questions. Okay, first up, we have Eden Santos of uh, Net25. Hello. Thank you, Ma'am Daphne. Uh, kay Secretary Bautista po, uh, can you elaborate lang po yung uh, binanggit ni Pangulong BBM yesterday dun sa media briefing uh, na wala naman pong plano ang administrasyon na isa pribado ang uh, operation ng uh, NAIA. Pero meron yatang kinokontrata na uh, private uh, sector group from New York na mag, uh, magmamanage po ng operation. Tama po ba yun? Uh, thank you, uh, Eden. No? Uh, ang ibig sabihin ng presidente, no? hindi naman natin uh, ibibigay sa private sector yung assets ng NAIA. No? Uh, ang ibig niyang sabihin ay uh, it's the private sector who will uh, manage the operations no? through a concession agreement. No? 
which is uh, what we have been doing in uh, two airports now, no? Uh, sa Cebu at sa, sa Clark, no? Uh, Cebu is uh, operated by uh, GMR Mega White, no? Although yung asset talaga ay asset naman ng uh, ng gobyerno, kaya hindi naman na privatized yung uh, infrastructure, no? Uh, this is uh, also the same with uh, the operations of uh, Clark International Airport. No? Yung asset remained with the government, but yung operations ay ginagawa ng private sector. Uh, are we expecting po na parang kagaya sa mga toll, toll uh, uh, expressways, eh baka po magkaroon ng pagtaas sa uh, mga airfare or sa mga ibang services po? ng ating uh, mga paliparan? Uh, hindi naman uh, automatic na tataas, no? Kasi uh, yung regulatory function will uh, remain with the government, no? And the uh, government will have a say in uh, the rates that uh, the operators will uh, impose, no? So, hindi ibig sabihin na tataas ka agad, no? Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Pa. Next, we have Alan Francisco of PTV4. Hi, ma'am. Hi, sirs. To Secretary Uy. Sir, what um, challenges have you been encountering regarding the SIM card registration, sir? Um, yun ang na-mention ko, no? Um, one of the challenges is uh, there are um, there there are just a little issue. Um, the, the main one, of course, is um, accessibility, especially in the remote areas. Uh, dahil maraming mga kababayan natin may mobile phones at... Um, at um, nangangailangan nila magpa-register within a certain period of time pero walang mga signals, walang mga wifi connection at dapat magbiyahe pa sila from their islands or from their communities to the municipio para makakuha ng signal para mga pag So that's one um, area. So we're addressing that now by deploying now those connectivity. Most of those connectivity will either be um, mobile meaning we're bringing our satellite systems and all of those para may connectivity sila doon sa mga areas na yan. Um, the, the second challenge is marami pa lang tayong mga kababayan na walang ID, lalo na sa mga liblibang lugar po. No? Um, so, how will they now uh, be able to register and validate their identity? So, yan, uh, we need to take that up uh, with, our, um, with our team to address how we are going to 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 validate um, the ano kung wala naman silang ID never pa sila nakakuha hindi naman sila nagmamane walang sasakyan doon so walang driver's license hindi naman sila nagbiyahe walang passport hindi naka-register sa SSS sa GSIS sa PhilHealth pag ibig wala so ang ano lang sa kanila is uh cedula which we all know um, it's easy to to, to oh, oh. or or senior citizen ID, which uh, again um, we 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 need to validate. So yun um, we also need to 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 help them and see how we are going to um, ascertain their their identity. Uh, so and then of course on the commercial side, yung mga resellers, yung mga distributors ng mga SIM card. Um, since na announced nag-announce tayo nito, bumagsak ang bentahan nila ng SIM cards. Dahil dati, etong mga scammers, etong mga sindikato, bili ng bili ng SIM card, tapon, SIM card tapon. Eh ngayon, alam nila na hindi na nila magagawa 'yan. So bumagsak ngayon yung bentahan ng SIM cards, which we will we act actually anticipated uh, that will happen. After all this registration, uh, there will be much fewer SIM cards that is going to be sold because there will be no more demand and most likely karamihan siguro mga SIM cards binibenta sa airports mm -hmm. dahil sa mga travelers uh, foreigners that will come be coming in that will buy their SIM cards but but in terms of the local population the sales will be very very small um, once once this ha this happens so those are the things that uh, we are studying and anticipating and preparing for thank you okay thank follow you follow up lang ma'am okay follow up yeah. uh -oh. sir um, mahirap i-validate yung identity ng mga kababayan natin in, in some remote areas which leads me to my next question yung sa national identification sir I mean mas makakatulong sana yon kung meron ng ID yung ating mga kababayan please um, clarify that sir Tama po 
at yun yun ang medyo that's a big challenge no and uh, you may have to address that question to the Philippine Statistics Authority since sila ang primary agency that's uh, implementing the national ID pero ang nakikita namin po na solution dito um, hindi pa hindi ko pa din discuss with the team no is that pag magsi SIM card the registration kami doon sa remote areas dadalhin na rin namin yung national ID system para right there pagka register na national ID mag SIM card registration na rin sila so we shoot two birds with one stone di ba mas madali yung yung deployment so yun yung mga solution na na pina-package po namin. Para. That's a great idea, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> great idea. It looks yes. like a popular uh, yes. idea uh, Oh, here. yeah. I see everybody nodding their head. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, po. Thank you. We have next Alvin Baltazar of uh, Radio Pilipinas. Secretary Uy, magandang umaga po. Follow-up lang po doon sa problema doon sa uh, commercial side ng sa SIM card. Base doon sa pakikipag-uusap niyo sa mga telcos, magkano yung malulugi sa kanila kung hindi madi-dispatch siya yung mga SIM? Uh, wala pa kaming idea doon. Uh, we'll have to talk with them uh, to see no? uh, kung marami ba sila na produce. But um, they already knew that the SIM card registration law was going to be signed last September. So I'm sure they've already anticipated na kung mapipirma yan, if they are you know, doing proper business planning, alam nila that the demand will significantly decrease. So, if I were them, I would not order new SIM cards from manufacturers. I will just make sure that the existing inventory is eh, maubos na lang. And then, um, dahan dahan lang deployment. So, it's a business planning side on their part on how they should. Uh, sa tingin ko, hindi naman malaking malulugi sa kanila. Dahil kung magaling sila sa planning, alam nila na itong batas, pag lumabas, babagsak yung demand. At pagbagsak ng demand, it will be foolhardy for them to still continue ordering the volume of SIM cards that they that they used to order. Secretary, na bigyan ko kanina no, uh, mukhang bumaba nga yung benta kasi yung mga scammers. Uh, masasabi ba natin na karon na chill effect doon sa mga scammers itong uh, SIM card uh, registration? Well, gusto ko lang matanong ho sa inyo, dati before this law was signed, ilang text messages na tatanggap niyo <laughs> sa isang araw at ngayon ilan po? I'm sure all of you felt a significant drop. Dati I get about 6 or 7, now one or two. Tama, mm -hmm. di ba? So I think that answers your question. Okay. Next we have Tuesday New of DZBB. To Secretary Bautista, sir. Sir, nung binigay nyo po yung uh, result, initial result of the investigation doon sa NAIA incident, ano po ang naging reaction ni Presidente? At can you, can you share to us, sir, some of your recommendations po para matugunan yung uh, problema na ito? Uh, this is not the first time that uh, we reported this to the President. You know? uh, we reported this uh, even uh, earlier, you know? uh, a few days after uh, the incident happened. You know? And uh, nakita nga niya na kailangan magkaroon ng some... Uh, improvements in uh, the maintenance of uh, the system no? and uh, ito yung uh, pinag-usapan namin na uh, uh, as much as possible uh, Kaap will uh, continue to maintain uh, the system uh, daily uh, weekly or monthly no? as uh, what uh, the maintenance program requires no? and uh, ang sabi nga niya uh, mas mabuti kung magkakaroon tayo talaga ng uh, permanent uh, maintenance agreement with the suppliers no uh, kasi hindi tayo nagkaroon ng uh, permanent maintenance agreement with them no since uh, the systems warranty uh, expired in 2020 no uh, nung uh, as early as September we have been uh, working with uh, uh, Sumitomo and Tales about this no uh, meron lang mga some issues that uh, we need to dress out no? uh, we need to settle some uh, financial issues with them no meron silang claim against the government where meron din tayong claim against them no and uh, we're just uh, trying to settle this no? and uh, hopefully uh, by the end of uh, this month uh, meron ng clear indication on how we will be able to settle the issue no and uh, isa sa mga recommendation niya ay uh, uh, still enter into an agreement with uh, the supplier no? 
uh, and separate uh, the issue of claims, no? which uh, we have already uh, communicated uh, with uh, the supplier even before. No? Uh, uh, we met with uh, Sumitomo and Tales uh, a few weeks ago, no? and we suggested that uh, we negotiate for a permanent maintenance agreement no? pending uh, the settlement of the issues. No? So yun ang uh, aming mga ginagawa ngayon. No? Uh, follow up lang, sir. Uh, yung mga, naulit po kasi yung incident last January 1 to last week, pero parang iba naman yatang problema yun. Uh, medyo maikli yung oras na ginugol doon mm -hmm. sa pagkukumpuni uh, ng something technically na problema. Uh, yung mga ganitong incident, sir, in the coming days or in the future, magkakaroon pa ba ng ganitong mga incident after these two incidents po? Yung, yung huling incident, no, this is a scheduled maintenance. No? Uh, kailangan ayusin na natin yung second UPS no, para magkaroon tayo ng backup. No? Kaya we made arrangement with uh, the supplier no? uh, for them to be able to fix uh, the second uh, UPS. No? It was scheduled uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. No? Uh, uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, sorry. No? Uh, medyo tumagal lang ng konti yung uh, uh, maintenance na ginawa. No? But uh, these are all coordinated. No? And uh, nagkaroon ng konting uh, delays yung uh, ibang mga airlines. No? But uh, as early as 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, operations was uh, already normal. No? Uh, with uh, all the uh, initiatives no, of uh, CAAP, its engineers, uh, co proper coordination with uh, the supplier, no, uh, we're not expecting this to happen again. Thank you, Tuesday. We have Ivan Marina of GMA7. Secretary Bautista, sir. After the January 1 incident, you said that a big amount of funds is needed to implement the necessary upgrades at the CNS ATM. How much money are we talking about and uh, saan po natin ito is a source? Uh, unang una, we need to uh, upgrade uh, the software. No? Uh, according to the supplier, uh, they do up two upgrades a year. No? And uh, since 2020, we have not had uh, any of the upgrades. No? Uh, wala pa silang binibigay na presyo uh, as, as of now because uh, this will be part of uh, the negotiation that uh, we will do. No? But uh, ang isa sa long-term solution namin uh, is uh, uh, not just to upgrade the system but to put up a permanent backup. No? Uh, importante na merong uh, permanent uh, backup system uh, which can be uh, located in another site, no? uh, which can operate simultaneously with uh, the existing system, no? which will be back up to its other. Normally, ganyan naman yung uh, system natin. No? Uh, a system operating, let's say, in Cebu, uh, together with the system operating in Manila, uh, which will be the backup for its other. No? So, yun ang tinitingnan namin. Uh, we will need to uh, prepare a feasibility study to do this no? and for us to be able to determine uh, the cost uh, which uh, we will present to NEDA for approval and uh, for uh, funding no? either from uh, ODA or from uh, GAA. No? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Julie Baiza of 1PH. Pangulo kahapon na magkakaroon ng management contract with the US firm. Uh, a group that runs several big airports abroad daw po. Gumugulong na po ba yun, sir? Nakausap na po ba? Or do we have a name ng uh, specific company? Uh, actually, uh, what will happen ano, is that uh, we are preparing the terms of reference. No? Uh, and uh, this will be subject to uh, uh, bidding by uh, uh, proponents no? so ito ang uh, hinihintay namin no? kasi uh, dalawa ang posibleng uh, mangyari no? one is uh, for us to receive what you call uh, an unsolicited proposal no? uh, 
na pwedeng kasama yung uh, kausap uh, namin sa New York no? uh, or uh, we will invite them to submit a proposal based on uh, the approved terms of reference no? that uh, we are now preparing no? uh, so yun ang uh, possibility uh, on the NAIA uh, uh, operations no? We have again from Tuesday New, DZBB. To Secretary Ivan, sir. Sir, sabi niyo kanina, more than 20 million na po ang SIM cards na nairehistro. Na Ilan po bang million ang inaasahan nating dapat na mairehistro ma hanggang sa April? At kakayanin po ba yung mairehistro lahat considering itong sinasabi niyo mga challenges po? Um... Based on the numbers na ibinigay sa amin ng mga telcos, eh, we have about 140 to 150 million SIM cards. Ngunit, um, hindi naman ho siguro lahat yon active. At kung maaring marami doon, eh, ginagamit kasi ng mga telemarketers, ng mga scammers. So, we are still figuring out kung ilang numbers doon ang non-legitimate uh, owners no, of those SIM cards. So, but with a population of 110 million, um, I think if it if we're able to register like 20 million per month, so we have a period of um, uh, three more months, no, three or four, four more, three more, three more months. So we're March, April, three more months. So that's 60, about 80 million. I think, um, I think, ano naman, we 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 are on track so far. And um, we'll we'll play it by ear and see how how fast we are able to to deploy that. The law provides uh, certain uh, adjustments no, that uh, the ICT can make um, in case there are any um, uh, gaps or challenges uh, in in the implementation of the registration. So we we have those um, tools, and uh, the the law provides us with that discretion. Um, if 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 uh, medyo kapusin tayo. Okay, thank you very much. I think this wraps up our uh, press conference today. And thank you so much to Secretary Jimmy Bautista of DOTR and Secretary Ivan Uy of DICT. Thank you so much, Malacanang Press Corps. Thank you. Magandang hapon. Umaga pa pala. Good morning pa.